Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So, today's video, um, we're going to do some step-by-step, -step, but I've got this made in China fish lamp tank. It uh, rotates the fish scene, got a fluorescent bulb inside. I, I picked this thing up at Value Village for like a couple of bucks and I thought, as were the risk. I mean, it ran there and it lit up, got it home. It lit up once after that, and then the fluorescent bulb died. Then, of course, no parts, right? So that kind of sucked. So I tried to hook up some LEDs off the power board, and turns out, of course, it's putting out the AC because it's an AC fluorescent, not a DC fluorescent. So that just kept exploding fluorescent bulbs all over the or LEDs. So I thought, well, another new little idea. Let's try something different. Um, so I've got some blue and red flasher lights, uh, LEDs, just to show you what we're talking about here. These things are actually kind of cool. Okay, blue and red. And some of them have different cycles to them, faster, slower. So this is going to actually make a quite, quite a nice little ocean scene going on. So what I've done is I've taken off the back cover here, which I've already got unscrewed ahead of time. And I've already got the locations marked out for five LEDs. And even though this is not going to look totally pro, as they say, um, it's not going to be seen when it's facing against a wall, so who cares? And, um, but I'm also going to put in a switch, too, so I can turn the power on and off. And I'm going to run it off just a little 3.7 volt LiPo and uh, see how that works out. So if you've got one of these things, don't throw it in the garbage even though there's no bulb. Just disconnect the bulb, take it out of there, cover up your wires or cut them short enough that they're not going to uh, short into anything. Because uh, there's going to be power still going through there. I'm actually going to heat shrink tube these after just to make sure. Um, and then you could take some just simple LEDs. Now these are 5 millimeter LEDs. Uh, so you're going to need a drill that's close enough to that 5mm or one that is 5mm. Now I have a 5mm drill and because um, I picked this up for other projects that because I do a lot of RC stuff um, I needed a 5mm drill so I had to special order one in because you can't just buy a 5mm drill at your local hardware store. At least not in this country. Uh, Canada of course. Anyhow, so I figure the first thing we'll do is I'll start drilling some holes, we'll stop the video, come back after the holes are drilled, and we'll insert our LEDs, um, and we'll start getting those things set up, and we'll just take you step by step. This way it's not a forever long video, right? Um, now because I got lots of height to play with here, no problem. So we're going to start with our first hole here, and I'm using a manual drill for this, which also gives me a little bit more control than a cordless one will. And I can also, I find with this drill, uh, for stuff like this, I can line things up a lot easier. It's just, I don't know, something about it. There we go. That's two. I just kind of eyeballed these so they're not going to be 100% perfect, but I wasn't going for uh, perfect as far as centering everything went. Would be handier with two people though. There we go. Oh, hole's done. Get all that out of the way. Our LEDs are just going to pop in there. You can hot glue these things in place after you get them inserted. Uh, or crazy glue, doesn't matter. Now, always remember LEDs, the longer post is always going to be your positive. 
So try and have your positives all facing the same way because you need to tie all your positives together. And then of course all your negatives will tie together and so on. So that's part one. So we're going to get these things fastened in place so they're not going to move around on us anymore. And uh, we'll come back and start doing some wiring. So we'll uh, see you shortly. Okay guys, we're back. So we're uh, ready to start uh, soldering some uh, wires onto these LEDs. Q-tip. Q-tips can be your friend for this. What you want to do is make sure your legs are raised up a little bit. You just want to put a little bit of flux paste on each positive leg. And you want to also pre-tin your wires as well. black wire I'm using also has a white stripe, so that's my indicator for positive and negative. And what we're basically going to do here is we're going to daisy chain our wires together as we go. Now I opted out for the crazy glue for the LEDs to keep them in place. Okay, so we got all our positive lines Start it up. And the idea too with using the flex is it's going to make the wire stick a lot easier and faster because you can't afford to get too much heat going up the leg on your LED or it's going to pop it don't want to do that. So if you've got heat shrink tubing, heat shrink tubing is your friend. Now, I'm going to just grab my little torch that I've got here. So don't overheat your heat shrink tubing either. You want to get it to shrink, you don't want it to burn. Okay, so next connection. Uh, we're going to put some more heat shrink tubing on this end. And we're going to have to go closer up this way. So we went down a little too far there. It's fine. Real easy cleanup.
now I gotta do two jumpers off this same lead. This isn't actually as confusing as it may look. Okay. Now I'm not heat shoot tubing every single connection either. Okay, so we'll stop the video here. I'll go and I'll run all my negatives, and which is gonna end up with this being the spot where I'm gonna connect my other wires, my switch, all that stuff up. So uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay guys, so uh, welcome back. And we got all of our black wires on, so now we're gonna do our test. Make sure we don't fry anything. And uh, we got power. So it is kind of nice that the they cycle a little bit different from each other. I don't know my camera's blurring out for this one. <laughs> there we go. Oh, 
Maybe my camera will stay in focus for that. So that's what we're going to have to look at. Now, next thing we got to do, of course, is get some uh, our battery hooked up to uh, the JST connector that it's going to need for when it needs to be plugged in as well as recharged. Just put that aside for a second. Move this over here. soldering paste on there, Tin our wires, Okay. Oh, that's sick and cool. That over there. And of course, we're going to have to decide where our battery is going to sit in relation to our switch. solder on our positive wire, our one connector here. Casing a little too short, so we have to actually put a little bit longer one on there. I think uh, just fit. Switch there. Donkey little wires. 
Okay, so we'll move this over here for a second. We'll uh, get this switch started and we'll be right back. Alright, so we've got our wires on our switch. Now what we're going to do is we're going to install our Velcro. We're going to have to have a place for our battery to sit. So I figure putting it out in there is pretty good. Now when you install a switch, it doesn't matter if it's on the positive side or the negative really makes no difference because you're just cutting power off and turning power back on. So, but you only go off one side. That's the big thing. Now, what we're going to want to do, I want to clip this back a little bit like that. And I've got my switch here. Solder there. Okay. I'll take a piece of blue for the other side here. Plug the power in. We've got power on, power off. Power on, power off. Okay, so now we just got to uh, decide how we're going to actually mount our power switch, which is I'm actually going to hot glue the power switch in place um, along a couple of these wires too and just leave it, you know, kind of freed up a little bit. Um, this way I don't have to, you know, worry about too much and uh, ensure that nothing here can cross or short each other. Everything looks really good. So we're even going to go the extra step and actually double protect in between just to ensure that everything's cool. And uh, so I'm going to have to shut the video off here. I'll let my hot glue gun heat up. And then we'll be back to uh, do that part and reassemble and fire it up and see how she looks. Right back. Okay guys, so we're uh, back with our panel here. I'm just gonna... There we go. So we're just going to uh, do a little bit of hot gluing here just to give contacts some safety here so there's no chance of anything shorting. along with heat shrink tubing as close as we can get it to areas. This is actually going to help maximize protection here. Uh, 
I think what I'll do is I'll put the cable right up in here. Stick to there, get out of there, get, get, get. Don't stick to my battery wire. I'll be able to get my battery out of, out of there when I need to. Okay. That's all fine there. Nice thing about this glue is it actually sets up pretty quick. Okay, and I think that's all the connections we got to worry about. Just a little bit more coverage there. And right in there. Now, I know some of you are going to probably thinking that this little setup looks a little ghetto. Um, but you know what, for uh, the couple of dollars I paid for this thing, and even if I would have paid retail, I'd be doing the same darn thing to save it as best as I can, because the motor is still running for the fish thing, and it looks absolutely stupid not being let, lit up, you know, so having it lit up is actually really nice, and, um, at least it gave me a chance by buying one of these things for cheap to see exactly, you know, what they're made of. And I did try looking for a replacement bulb and I couldn't get one. So, you know, that's not to say that some of these don't have replacement bulbs available. This particular one didn't have any replacement bulbs. So now we're going to put everything back together. And I already put heat shrink on that wire I was telling you about from the old connections. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, but to be able to salvage this, and I'm actually thinking this flasher setup with the LEDs is going to work out really nice, um, only because before it was like a steady light, and it was also really bright too. Um, when it did actually work and I didn't want to have it all that bright. Now the thing, thing is with the LEDs this thing can run all night long off the battery and it'll probably still be alive in the morning. We are actually going to find that out for sure. But thing is I can run it during the day without the lights and at night you know, even if it's a couple hours here, a couple hours there, you know, I, I can run it with the lights and it still has that cool look that it had, but it should be even cooler now that we have flashing LEDs. So, let's plug this thing in. here so that's actually kind of cool I, I, I think it's kind of neat what do you you know let me know what you guys think um, I don't think we can make a whole lot of improvement here um, let me just try a bright white light because it's not too late to add another bulb in if I need to There's my test, ba test battery. Yeah, I think we'll uh, add a single white LED in there. And I think that'll do it just perfect. 
Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add a single white LED and then we'll come back. Okay guys, so we got our white light in. So I put it a little bit lower than where we tested it at. And this is our result. I'm just gonna kill off this other light here. So it gives a little bit of light for contrast. And the flashers do their job. Give it that C type color and you know, a bit of red there and you know, so it kind of simulates I guess the coral and stuff and but uh you know I think overall it's uh actually turned out uh, really well in fact a little better than I expected um, so I'm, I'm actually really happy with this and you know um, we've got a total of uh, what six LEDs sitting in this thing and these LEDs are each rated for 3.7 volts so yeah I've got one two three four yeah six LEDs in here and they're all running off of a 3.7 volt uh, battery now when this battery is fully charged, of course, it's about 4.2 uh, volts, full power. That's just the nature of lipos. And, you know, all batteries overcharge among their normal rating. But um, this should run for several hours on end. Now, I know someone's going to ask this, so I'm going to tell you ahead of time. All the LEDs are wired in parallel, which means positive to positive, negative to negative. I didn't wire any of them in series. I've tried that before and to take two of them and wire them in series really sucks the juice down really bad. Um, which in theory I guess it shouldn't but it does. Um, but I have tried it before and it did do that. Uh, so I wired them all in parallel. This way each bulb actually gets its full you know 3.7 volts full power uh, to it and with enough bulbs that we have in here all together there's enough division that even if I was over a little bit it wouldn't make that big of a difference but at least with running all six off the 3.7 volt battery uh, we're definitely gonna get a good idea on runtime. I have no idea the milliamp rating of this battery um, it's the uh, same, same type of battery that's used in some helicopters, uh, but this one was actually pulled out of a, uh, uh, a Bluetooth uh, speaker that the Bluetooth went la-la on. And uh, so I thought, yeah, let's take it apart, see what went wrong. Well, don't take apart a Bluetooth speaker because it's not going to go back together right. So anyways, I thought, yeah, who cares? So I scored the battery out of it good perfect battery and uh, it's uh, now got a job for however long it lasts and when it dies in goes another lipo uh, but until then I'll recharge it and recharge it until there's nothing left of it um, but uh, this actually looks nicer than the original display because the original display with the big fluorescent tube it was really bright when it did actually work and uh, actually a little bit too bright. This actually gives it a better mood setting and it gives the nice flash to it as well. And just having that single white LED uh, right where it is seems to do the trick uh, just great with the passing scene. Uh, so anyways, uh, let me know what you guys think. Like I said, I know it looks a little ghetto on the back end, you know, but um, it's not like I'm doing this for somebody else and I never would either just because I know how much of a pain it is um, to try and set this up um, and to try and do it all from the inside there really isn't the room for it anyhow um, I've been all over that inside and out with this particular one there's no room to just do everything on the inside and uh, this works better it keeps the battery on the outside too my switch was, would be on the outside either way but I mean what did this cost me you know, um, the wire was basically scrap wire, so it's free. Uh, the switch was out of um, a broken helicopter, uh, so that was free. Uh, battery was out of a Bluetooth speaker uh, that I picked up for, you know, next to nothing. So the battery is technically, uh, what, a buck? 
I've got in it the JST connectors. They were out of dead helicopters, so hey, free again. So I got basically a buck into it or two, a little bit of solder, some glue, you know. And I don't care what it looks like on the back because I'm not in it to look at the back. I want to see the front. And that's exactly what I want to see. And this is actually going to make my wife really happy too because now we'll be able to uh, enjoy this in the room that it's going to stay in because she's been wanting to see this up and running since I bought it too. And uh, now it is, so rock and roll. Anyways, um, so if you got one of these fish lamps, as they call them, and you've got this problem, there's a cheap little fix for you. Uh, oh yeah, the drill bit was worth a couple of dollars for the five millimeter drill bit. So really not a lot of money out there, you know. And LEDs are dirt cheap, so, you know, it, uh, it all works. Anyways, catch you on the next video, guys.